Hello students, welcome to ECLIMU Learning Simplified and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lessons, we discussed how to calculate volume of regular shaped solids like spheres and cylinders and many others. And we found out that we can calculate their volume by using a specific uh, formula. Like in this case, we said area or, or volume of a sphere, volume of a sphere is calculated as 4 over 3 pi r cubed then volume of a cylinder if it's a cylinder vo volume is equals to pi r squared h and many other shapes now in this lesson we are going to discuss how to determine the volume of liquids and you need the idea of what we discussed earlier when we were discussing the states of matter, we said solids, they have a specific uh, shape, but liquids, they take the shape of the container. So that is the idea which we are going to use to calculate the volume or to determine the volume of uh, liquids. So by the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to describe, describe how to measure or to determine and calculate volume of liquids using various tools. So we are going to use various tools like volumetric flasks, uh, measuring cylinders, syringes, pipettes, and many other uh, tools. Now, how do we measure the volume of liquids? We can do this by using two main ways. And the first one, is when we use a container of uniform cross section like in this first picture in the video we can use we pour the liquid into a container with uniform cross section so it means the cross sectional area here is uniform and it's known and then calculate its volume so in this case we as we mentioned liquids take the shape of the container so if we know the radius of this container we can use the relationship of finding the area the base area as cross-sectional area is equals to pi r squared since we know the radius and then now if we multiply it by the height which the liquid will take then we will have the volume of the liquid which is in cylindrical form because it has taken the cylindrical shape of the container so we are going to see that later now we can use another method by using a measuring instrument we have measuring instruments which can measure volume of liquids perfectly a good example is an instrument you can see on the screen called a burette we are going to see how a burette can be used to measure uh, volume later so to use a container with uniform cross section to measure or to determine the volume of a liquid, first you need to pour the liquid into the container. That's the first step. And then height is measured. So you just pour the liquid into the container and take a measuring instrument like a ruler or a tape measure and measure the height and record it. Now, since we know the radius of this container with uniform cross section or if it's a square if you know the sides of that square container then in this case like here we have a, a, a cylindrical then you have to find the cross sectional area cross sectional area using the radius area which is going to be pi r squared because we have uh, r then we can find the cross sectional area now to get the volume of the liquid then we multiply the cross-sectional area with the height that we have. So now our volume will be pi r squared, that is the cross-sectional area, then times height of the liquid that it will take. Then in that case, you could have found the volume of that liquid. For the case of a measuring instrument, which is used to measure volume, we have different a measuring instrument and we are going to see them we have those which can measure accurate volumes and we have those which can measure approximate volumes so the instrument that we have one is a measuring cylinder the first one on the screen 
Then we have the pipette. I think we have discussed this in chemistry. We also have a burette. And then we have volumetric flask. Of course, it has a mark here. And then we have finally a beaker. We have a beaker's number E. So it is very important to note that the volumetric flask that you have just seen, burette and pipette, among those apparatus that we have seen, they measure fixed and accurate volumes of liquids. Then what does it mean? The rest of the apparatus that you saw, like measuring cylinders, they only measure approximated volumes. So if you need accurate volumes, then you have to use only these specific apparatus like photometric flask, burette, and pipette. We are going to discuss a, bu a burette later. So you can see the burette is here. This is the burette. This is what we call a burette, but we are going to discuss more about it later. And then this is the measuring a cylinder. This one is used to measure accurate volumes. This one is approximate volumes. Now, a burette, which we have said is used to measure accurate volumes of liquids, and I want you to note this, it has a scale which is calibrated downwards. Downward means the zero mark starts from the top, and then the maximum mark is at the bottom. Like we have 50, let's say, we have 50 cubic centimeters at the bottom, then we have zero centimeters at the top. And most burette ranges from 0 to 50. So it means as you move down, its uh, scale increases. 10 cubic centimeter, let's say 20 cubic centimeter. Then let's say we have 30 cubic centimeter. Then we have um, 40 cubic centimeter. So the scale starts from 0 and it increases downwards. And we are going to use this to do some few calculations later. So let's do an example so that we see how to use a burette to measure accurate measurements. The question reads, the water level in a burette is 20 cubic centimeters. So let's say we have a burette and the water level is 20, 20 cubic centimeters. So we said the scale of a burette starts from zero at the top and then maximum is at the bottom then now the initial so it means here we have a liquid here we have a very serious liquid like that because the tap is at the bottom and then 100 if 100 drops we have some 100 drops falling 100 drops falling out so it means when it's 100 drops when these drops are falling the volume inside this uh, barrel will be decreasing so if the volume will be decreasing it means the scale will be increasing from 20 to something like 25 30 like that so if 100 drops whose average volume is 0 0.2 uh, cubic centimeters what is the final level of the burette so in this case we are going to do a very simple math. If 0 0.2 cubic centimeters is one drop, then 100 drops is equals to what volume? So if we do a cross multiplication, it will be 0 0.2 cubic centimeter times 100 drops over one drop. Now, as usual, drop will drop will cancel with the drop and then then it will remain 0 0.2 times 100 which is 20 cubic centimeters so the volume of water which fell from 20 then it in it the, the, the volume decreased in this burette the, the 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 volume of the liquid now the liquid decreased by 20 so the 20 centimeters cubed fell into this beaker then it means if this 20 fell into the beaker, also the scale now in this case, since the scale is increasing downwards, now the scale will increase to by 20. So the scale will increase here by 20 cubic centimeters. 
Therefore, if the initial was 20, then if you need now this mark, this is what we are, we are looking for. If you need this mark of the burette, then it will be initial, which was 20 cubic centimeter. Then now the new volume will be plus because the, the, the scale is increasing down the group, down the burette, then it will be plus 20 cubic centimeter. And then your answer will be 40 cubic centimeters. So when you are using a burette NB, when you are using a burette, if you add, or no, if you remove, let's use this one. If you remove a liquid from the burette, then you add the scale. Like in this case, we have removed 20, then the initial was 20, we have added, so it is 40 cubic centimeters. That is the final reading of the burette. Let's look at when we are adding the, the, the volume or the, the, the liquid into the burette. In this case, we are, we are removing, it was falling. Now let's see when, see when we are adding the volume into the burette. Now, the question is, the initial level of water in a burette, the same case here, we have a burette and it has a scale. It has a scale. Now, zero is at the top as usual, maximum 50 is at the bottom. And then they are saying the initial was 32. So, initial was 32 cubic centimeter. So, it means here we have a serious uh, liquid or water in this case. And then some 20 drops of water, each of volume 0 0.4 are added so in this case you are adding some water here it's not now falling the tap is closed and now you are adding some 20 drops so what will happen here if the scale was 32 initially now this scale will move up that's what we mean literally in this case the scale will move up and now where it will reach that will be our interest so in this case if 20 let me use the blue pen now if if one drop which was added is equals to 0 0.4 cubic centimeter 20 drops what volume do they have so it will be 20 drops times 0 0.4 cubic centimeter over one drop so in this case drop will drop with the drop <laughs> and then we will have 20 times 4 which is going to give us 20 times 4 is going to give us 8 cubic centimeters so now the initial volume was 32 now, when you added the liquid into this burette, the scale in decreased now from 32 to something by 8. By 8, the, 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 the scale decreased by 8 cubic centimeter. So now, when if you want to get the final reading of the burette, what do you do? Then it means you will take 32 cubic centimeter, the initial. In this case, now you are decreasing the scale minus. 8 cubic centimeter, which you are going to get as the final reading as 24 cubic centimeter as your final reading of the scale. So NB, in this case, when you are adding a volume into a burette, then you subtract the scale. So when you add the volume, 
this is the you are adding then you subtract the scale then when you are subtracting volume this volume here let's let's write it with another ink very important we have a table like this volume then what you do to scale when you are adding volume you subtract the scale when you are subtracting volume you add the scale like in this case we are adding we are adding volume here we are subtracting uh, the scale let me not use that one when you are adding volume you are subtracting the scale and then now when you are uh, remo removing volume or you are subtracting the volume then you add the scale so finally one thing that you should note is that when you are using uh, these measuring instruments like um, beakers, burettes, volumetric flask, conical flask, measuring cylinders, it's important that when you are reading the scale, you read perpendicularly, you read 90 degrees, like on this screen we have someone reading 90 degrees, and at the bottom of the meniscus, at the bottom of the meniscus. Meniscus, we have two types of meniscus. Let me draw one which is more clear. So we have two types of meniscus. One of it is called concave. Then the other one, concave meniscus. We have the other one called convex meniscus. So for concave meniscus, it looks like this. Where the liquid bends downwards. Like in this case, when you want to make reading here, then you have to read 90 degrees at the bottom of this meniscus. So you position your eye either here or here and not here. Don't position your eye here. That one you will make a, a wrong reading. And then when we have a convex meniscus, a convex meniscus looks like this, where the, 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 the meniscus bends up. Then when you are going to read this one, you read at the top. Of the meniscus like that when it's a convex meniscus like when you are you have mercury or grace line in a, a beaker then in this case you would position your eye here or here in this case if you position your eye here it would be wrong so you should be very careful when you are reading these two types of meniscus we have said we have concave and convex meniscus so students that is the end of our lesson today i hope you have enjoyed and welcome to ECADIMU Learning Simplified.